Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News update and the inflation data for March has been published and if you're not ready for a shock, probably better to fast forward the video. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, interannual inflation data for March has been published, and it's not for the faint-hearted. As we can see here, inflation hits 9.8% in March, the highest rate in 37 years due to electricity, fuel, and food. The Consumer Price Index, CPI, rose by 3% in March compared to the previous month, and suddenly raised its year-on-year -year rate by more than two points to 9.8%, its highest value in 37 years, specifically since May 1985. With the March figure, the year-on-year -year CPI has recorded its 15th consecutive positive rate, according to advanced data published on Wednesday by the National Statistics Institute. According to the Institute, the increase in the year-on-year -year CPI in March to 9.8% percent is due to generalized rises in most of its components, among which the rise in the prices of electricity, fuels and food and non-alcoholic beverages are higher in March this year than in the same month in 2021. So the highest interannual inflation rate here in Spain since 1985. I'll say it again, since 1985. Now, as we know, the government is trying to mitigate the effects of the current crisis. And yesterday it approved its 16 billion euro aid package. As we can see here, the government approves the 16 billion euro shock plan against the war. We will come out of this crisis together, it said. The Council of Ministers has given the green light this Tuesday to the response plan to the war in Ukraine, a package of measures awaited by both businesses and consumers, and which will end on the 30th of June. In total, 16 billion euros in direct aid, tax cuts, and a new line of ICO credit guarantees that aim to cushion the effect that the Russian invasion is having on our pockets, with the price of gas, electricity, and fuel soaring due to Russian dependence. So the government confident that this is the solution to Spain's economic woes at the moment and putting out slogans that we will come out of this crisis together. So the government propaganda machine working overtime at the moment. Another person who's upbeat at the moment and was tweeting positive messages on Twitter yesterday was Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. And as we can see in his tweet from yesterday, he said, we are a government that delivers, that protects citizens and businesses. Today in the Council of Ministers, we approved the shock plan against the impact of war. It will mobilize 16 billion euros and will Will promote measures in different areas to cushion the effects of Putin's invasion. Hashtag Spain responds. So according to Sanchez, we have a government that delivers, a government that protects citizens and businesses, and finished off with the hashtag Spain responds. But I think this hashtag would have been more appropriate. Now one of the main components of the government shock plan is a 20 cent reduction per litre on fuel. And as we can see here, this is how the 20 cent fuel discount will work from this Friday. The government on Tuesday approved a package to respond to the energy crisis caused by the war in Ukraine. Among the measures is the 20 cents per litre fuel rebate for all motorists, whether private or professional. This discount will begin to be applied this Friday, the 1st of April, and will be in force until the 30th of June. Customers will receive the discount directly at the point of sale and must be notified of the amount of the transaction in detail on the invoice. The price before the discount and the final price with the discount applied must be included. The payment of the 20 cents rebate is shared between the state, which contributes 15 cents, and the oil companies, which contribute at least another 5 cents. So a 20 cent per litre direct discount, which will be applied at the point of sale. And remember, it must be highlighted on the receipt. So some relief for drivers coming to effect this Friday, the 1st of April. And how have some petrol stations responded to this news? Well, as we can see here, hundreds of petrol stations increased their prices after the 20 cents per litre bonus is announced. The government's announcement of the extension of the fuel price subsidy to the entire population was met with a rapid response on Tuesday at hundreds of service stations across the country. In just one day, the price of petrol and diesel in a large number of these establishments shot up by more than 5 cents per litre, according to the price statistics that the Secretary of State for Energy manages and updates every day. This amount is equal to the effort that the government has asked oil companies and petrol stations to make as a contribution to resolving the energy price 
crisis and helping to reduce inflation, while the Treasury will assume the other 15 cents. So there we go, the oldest trick in the book, oil companies and petrol stations being forced to lower their prices by 5 cents on Friday. So what do they do? They put them up 5 cents before Friday. So solidarity, obviously not a word in these people's vocabulary. Now if you are a truck driver and you're looking to move to Spain, you're in luck. Because as we can see here, 120,000 truck drivers wanted. Demand soars 52% in a year, but pays 2.1% less. Two pandemic years with digitalization and e-commerce as the big winners have contributed to the rise of transport and logistics to second place in job offers by volume of vacancies. In total, 281,681 such jobs were offered last year, according to the annual labour market report of 2021, compiled from surveys by the InfoJobs portal and the Asadi Business School. The figure does not yet exceed the numbers for 2019, but it does represent a greater weight on the total, indicating that it is recovering before other activities. With e-commerce turnover growing at double-digit rates, while so many activities were subject to subsidies, Delivery and heavy goods vehicle drivers are an indispensable link, as evidenced by the strikes over the last 15 days that have threatened supply chains. So want to drive a truck in sunny Spain? Now's your time. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation here in Spain. We can see the accumulated incidence rate creeping up and is now sitting at 466. However, hospital pressure remains low at 3.5% and ICU pressure also low at 5.4%. Now with the holiday season here in Spain fast approaching, a lot of people are asking the question, will unvaccinated travellers from the UK be able to enter Spain from Friday? On Thursday, the 31st of March, the extension of the requirement to be vaccinated or have a valid recovery certificate to enter Spain, including the Canary Islands from the UK, comes to an end. But will it be extended again or will, finally, it be abolished and give the final piece in the jigsaw to full recovery and normality? In the next 48 hours, the Spanish Parliament has a busy schedule with fuel price subsidies to be passed by the Council of Ministers, the end of mandatory masks indoors on the agenda for debate and vote. But this subject can't be ignored as it expires naturally on Thursday, so it has to be addressed. Here at the Canarian Weekly, we believe that the requirement will be cancelled and people will be able to enter the country again and come to the Canary Islands, but whether or not that involves taking a test or not, we don't know. So the publication, the Canarian Weekly, confident that the no vax, no entry requirement that is currently in place for people from the UK will disappear as of Friday. But they're not so sure on whether or not you will need to have a negative test to enter Spain. So we'll see if the Canarian Weekly gets it right tomorrow. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Erica have read that the petrol decrease will start on Friday the 1st of April. April Fool's Day. True, it isn't the official Spanish Santos en Authentes, which may mean that it is going to be true. Erica, thanks for the comment, and there is no doubt that it is going to be true, even though it is coming into effect on April the 1st, because as we know, and as you point out in your comment, here in Spain, we don't celebrate April Fool's Day. The Spanish equivalent, El Día de los Santos en Authentes, is the 28th of December, I believe. So no April Fool's Day pranks here in Spain, and the price of fuel will come down on the 1st of April. But as we saw before, a lot of petrol stations have recently increased their prices, so the discount might not have that much of an effect. One here from Jersey, Stu, do you buy fresh milk or that awful UHT white liquid? I still can't understand why it's so popular here. At least I can get fresh milk here in Creviente. Yeah, Jersey, thanks for the comment, and I also don't have any idea why the UHT milk variety is so popular in this country. I asked the question the other day and the reply that came back was cost. So maybe it's cost, maybe it's custom, but people here definitely prefer the long life UHT variety of milk over the fresh stuff. One here from Anne, sorry, but Spain will be third on the destination list as they still have the crazy health form to complete. I have asked before, but no reply. Do you see any chance they may stop this to make it easier for tourist travel to boost the economy? Yeah, and thanks for the comment, and obviously referring to an article that we saw the other day about how Portugal has now overtaken Spain as the preferred holiday destination of people in the UK. In fact, Spain is now in fourth place behind Greece, France and the aforementioned Portugal. And to be honest, I have no idea if Spain is going to scrap the crazy health form, as you put it, in the near future. But as we saw before, and according to the Canarian Weekly, Spain may soon open the door 
to the unvaccinated. One here from Steve, we've just got back to the UK from our trip to Mohakad. Although the weather was not great, we still had a great holiday. On the beach when the sun was shining, great restaurants and wonderful people helping us out as we are a disabled couple. I try with my Spanish and get by. Keep up the videos as we love them. Steve. Yes, yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment. Glad you liked the videos and great to see that you had a wonderful time down there in Mojaca, Almeria. And although the weather wasn't great, you did manage to get to the beach and enjoy some sun. And also good to see Steve was that you made an effort with the language and I'm sure it was appreciated by the locals. One here from Frank, daylight saving, not savings. Yeah, Frank, thanks for the comment and I'll put this comment down as angry comment of the day and for pointing out that I should have said daylight saving and not daylight savings. But my question for you, Frank, is are you sure? Because as we can see here, daylight saving time, also known as daylight savings, time or daylight time and summer time is the practice of advancing clocks during the warmer months so that darkness falls at a later clock time from wikipedia so your apology frank please leave it in the comment section below one here from Anikin, we're doing our bit to support the Spanish tourism industry this year. I was there for a week two weeks ago. We're going for a week in May, two weeks in June, and hopefully a week in October. My parents own a flat and car, so it's a cheap holiday for us. Had a trip to Lisbon planned for June 2020, which got cancelled, and I'd like to reschedule it, but not this year. Love Portugal, holidayed there as a child a few times. Yeah, Nikan, thanks for the comment, and you're definitely helping out the Spanish economy by spending so much time here in 2022. Even though you said it's a cheap holiday for you guys here because you stay at your parents' house, I'm sure that you do put money into the Spanish economy if you go out to restaurants and things like that. So good to see, and let's hope that you can also get to Portugal in the near future. And finally, one here from Pedro the Wise, you drive all that way for milk even when you still got some. Are you not concerned about your carbon footprint? Yeah, Pedro, thanks for the comment, and I'll put your comment down as smart-ass comment of the day. And who are you to question mine or anybody else's carbon footprint? So Pedro, mate, can you do me a favor? Unless you've got something valuable to add to the comment section, please refrain from commenting. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Except you, Pedro. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.